Welcome back to Gyms. My name is Melissa Mitchell from here in Australia from Abundant Life Studio. And today I've been asked to react to When Quran Shocked Jeffrey Lang. Uh, the channel is I Only Fear Allah. Um, let's have a look. When was this uploaded? Two months ago, 530,000. 4,000 views and the channel has almost 40,000 subscribers. That's a decent channel. Um, I'll watch this and uh, react to it and let you know at the end, of course, of my uh, opinion. Let us know at the end what you thought of it. If you like this reaction, give us the thumbs up, uh, leave your comments and thoughts below. And of course, before we get started, if you haven't already, subscribe below. And if you'd like to be notified when Jim's next uploads our videos, um, click that subscribe. Sorry, I was going to do the thumbs up there. Click that uh, subscribe button and the notifications, sorry, the bell icon, so you know when we uh, next upload. Uh, and of course, if you do enjoy our channel, make sure you share it with your friends, family and loved ones. Okay, here we go. I'm going to push play. When Quran shocked Jeffrey Lang, and the channel is I Only Fear Allah. So here we go. I'll push play, and we'll see what it's all about at the end. I looked at that question and said, that's my question. Why would you create this violent and pernicious creature when you could create angels? You can't just get off that easy. You can't just tell me you know exactly what you're doing. Not after what I've been through. And it began like this. It said, Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I am going to place a vicegerent on earth. The Arabic word is khalifa. It means a representative or an emissary of mine. I am going to place a vicegerent on earth. And they said, the angels said, Will you place therein one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we celebrate your praises and glorify your holiness? And God said, he said, Truly, I know what you do not know. See, that's the verse that hooked me. That's the verse that caught my attention. That's the one that kept on making me read the story again and again and again. Because listen to the way it begins. Behold, your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place a representative of mine on earth, a vicegerent of mine, an emissary, one who acts on my behalf. I thought, that, that's not the way it goes. <laughs> You're not supposed to be placing man on the earth in some positive role some elective office. You place man as a, on earth as a punishment for his sin. Clearly, I knew the author didn't quite get the point. But still, it was an amazing line. But then I come to the next line, and it says, and the angels say, will you place her in one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we celebrate your praises and glorify you? I looked at it again. I couldn't believe the question. They said, will you place her in one who will spread corruption and shed blood while we, the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you? I looked at that and I said, exactly. That would be my question. Why would you create this being, supposedly for some positive role, when he's capable of doing tremendous wrongdoing? When he could spread corruption and shed much blood? Why would you create this violent and pernicious creature when you could create angels? As the angels clearly say, while well, we, well, we, the angels, celebrate your praises and glorify you. They're asking one of the most fundamental questions in the entire history of religion. Why create you, man, this utterly fallible creature this creature who could rebel against God's will, who could do such tremendous wrongdoing, who could wreak havoc like no other creature on earth, when you can make him angels. And look where the question is being asked. It's being asked in heaven. It's almost like saying, look, why don't you just make him angels and be up here in heaven with us, you know? Why don't you just make him angels, pop him into heaven, he's fine. Why would you put him on earth where he could feel distant from you, where he could work out his Worse criminal tendencies, act them out, feeling somehow independent and apart from you and free to do whatever he wants, when you could just make them angels and put them into heaven and make them perfectly submissive to your will. I looked at that question and said, that's my question. I'm not, I'm one, not even a single verse into the story of mankind 
And there before me, I see my question. That whole question, everything that I ever thought, everything that I ever experienced, everything that I ever knew was in that question. It was as if the author took my life and wanted to pick out exactly the right question to humiliate me, to provoke me, to anger me. Why create man, this most destructive and violent creature, when you could make him angels? And then look at the answer. And he said, God said, truly I know what you do not know. You know, in modern parlance, we would say, I know exactly what I'm doing. I read that and said, what? You know what you do not know? You know exactly what you're doing? Well, please inform me. Tell me what you're doing. Because, you know, I'm, I'm 28 years old and I haven't figured out it yet. And I have a lot of issues that I'm still dealing with that's connected to this question. You can't just get off that easy. You can't just tell me you know exactly what you're doing. Not after what I've been through. Not after you made me this way. And then I realized, of course, I was arguing with a God I didn't even believe in. And that would happen several times as I read through the Quran. And sometimes I would just get into such, so, I was so agitated by what I read, I'd start arguing with this voice that's, that's, that I'm reading before me, that's calling to me. So we turn to the next verse. Well, it turns out that the Quran just doesn't dismiss the question. It starts to answer it a little bit. And in the next verse it says, and he taught Adam, God taught Adam, the names of all things. And then he placed them before the angels and said, tell me their names if you are right. So this verse is clearly referring to the previous one. But notice what it says. Now, I, I, from my own background, I remember Adam naming things. But it wasn't connected to any answer to any philosophical question. But here, notice what it says. And he taught Adam the names of all things. And I realized already, just from the first verse, you got to read these verses very carefully because it's packed with a lot of symbolism and meaning. And he taught Adam the names of all things. So here we see Adam is not only just a creature who knows how to name things, who's acquiring the gift of language, but he's also a learning creature. God is teaching him. Now right here, right in this verse, and it'll come even clearer in the subsequent verses, that the very first thing that the, that the Quran is going to emphasize here is man's intellect. He is a learning creature. He is taught. And what is he taught? What is, the, what is one of the great intellectual gifts he's given in response to the angel's question? The gift of language. Because through language, mankind could not only learn, but he could learn things not only through his own experience, but he could learn things that other people have experienced of times and places that are hundreds, thousands of years and miles separated from him. And so that all our knowledge becomes cumulative. Every generation learning from the generation before it. I'm learning today from authors I read from other sides of the world that may have existed 2,000 years ago. And so we all contribute to our collective learning and knowledge. And so what I'll see later in the Quran, when the Quran will emphasize this again and again and again, like in one verse it says, read in the name of your Lord who created. Created a man out of a tiny creature that clings. Read, it commands the reader, for your Lord is most bountiful. Why is he most bountiful? What great gift did he give you? For he taught man the use of the pen, and through it taught him what he otherwise could not know. And time and time and time again, the Quran will call upon man to use his intellectual faculties and swear by his intellectual faculties and to, and to use them correctly as a, as, as, because they play a fundamental role in guiding him to truth. I never came upon a scripture that puts so much emphasis on the correct use of our intellectual faculties, on the harnessing of reason in helping us attain to faith. And he taught Adam the names of all things. And then he placed them before the angels and said, tell me their names if you are right. Okay, you have this objection to, you have this natural question about this creation of mankind. Here, this mankind is a, this is a human being, this human creature is a learning creature. He has many intellectual gifts. Here, I'm going to place these things before you. Tell me their names if you are right about man. And what did the angels say? In the next verse they say, glory to you. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. In truth, it is you who are knowing the wise. 
They say this, would be, this task, this intellectual test that's put before them is beyond their grasp. Notice what they emphasize. We have no knowledge. This would take knowledge. This would take an intellect that they don't possess. In truth, it is you who are knowing the wise. You got it. It's easy for you. You have you're the knowing, the wise. You have knowledge. You have wisdom. But this would take knowledge and wisdom that is beyond us. And so in the next verse we read, and he said, Oh, Adam, tell them, tell them their names. And when he had told them their names, notice how it's just like it's nothing for him. For mankind, he has this phenomenal ability. And when he had told them their names, as if it was just a triviality for man, he names them. Oh, Adam, tell them their names. And when he had told them their names, God said, did I not tell you that I know what is unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and conceal? And he's clearly going back to the angel's question. Yes, you have these natural concerns about the creation of mankind. Yes, he could do these evil things. But look at this tremendous intellect he has. This is something you have overlooked that you haven't considered. And that's clearly the point of these verses. Even though I, under, I felt that the author didn't quite, you know, it was as if I, I realized that he didn't, not, just didn't misunderstand the story. He was taking one of the great stories in the history of humankind, one of the fundamental greatest stories in the history of mankind, and molding it and using it as a vehicle for an entirely original message. <clears throat> and God said, did I not tell you that I know what is unseen in the heavens and the earth? And I know what you reveal and what you conceal? In other words, didn't I tell you I know exactly what I'm doing? And then in the next, and didn't I not tell you what I, that I know what you reveal and conceal? I looked at that. What question did their, I mean, what did they reveal and what did they conceal? What did their question reveal and conceal? I thought about it for a minute. Oh, it's obvious. What did their question reveal? You just go back and look at the question. It revealed the sinful and sinister propensities of man. I mean, it's obvious, right? Why are you all looking at me like that? <laughs> You're starting to scare me. You're all looking very serious. Am I losing you? <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So, they revealed the sinister and evil propensities of man. But what did their question conceal? And all you have to do is think about it for a minute. The human beings, yes, they could do evil. Yes, they could do wrong. Yes, they could create misery, but they could also do exactly the opposite. They could choose to do evil. They could choose to do tremendous good. Yeah. They, could, they could choose to do tremendous violence. They could choose to show tremendous compassion. They could choose to, be, to, you know, to live by falsehood. They could choose to live by the, the greatest truths. They could be terribly ugly. They could be terribly beautiful. And I, up until that point in my life, I, like the angels, had only saw one, half of, one side of the coin. And for the first time when I read that verse, believe it or not, it was an eye-opener for me. I had always been <laughs> obsessed with the evil potentials of human beings. When I read that verse, I realized that, and I had a great example right in front of me with my own mom, I realized that I had been blinded by only one side of human nature. So we go on to the next verse. And behold, we said to the angels, bow down to Adam. Before leaving, make sure to subscribe, share your comments, and turn on notifications for the latest updates. Okay, wow. It was interesting. Now, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I don't know who Jeffrey Lang is. I'm obviously... Uh, we urgently oh, need your help to fight me. Hunger. Let me just uh, quickly... I just want to have a quick look who Jeff... Uh, let me just open another... Let me just have a look. Who I'm I obviously I've got an idea who he is, Jeffrey Lang. Uh, I'm I'm guessing like he's a, is he a minister? Jeffrey Lang. Did he become a Muslim? Jeffrey Lang's birth. 
Okay, religious journey. Wow, okay. He must he must have converted. Wow. Okay. From Christian to atheist to Islam. Wow. Okay, that's that's wow, that's pretty powerful. Okay. I thought he must have been something like that. Okay. That's really, really interesting. And he made some really good points in there. And obviously, being an atheist myself, I don't know a lot of the history like um and a lot of the stories when he's talking about. Obviously, I know who Adam is and he's explaining well. This is the story and and how it flows through and and how it makes sense in in the Quran, and I really think that's beautiful. Um, and he explained that really really well. He made a point at the start about you know well if you're going to create this vile human, why not create them as angels? And I know this is something that our viewer my our viewers are not going to want to hear, but for me as an atheist, and I want to put this to our viewers. Um, this is something I think some atheists, I'm not, I can't speak for all atheists, but I know as an atheist, I know what Jeffrey is saying here. This is something that that I know I struggle with. I don't understand when when people say there's a God. For me, I find it very hard when people do say there's a God or there's a higher power or or whatever people, a particular religion, I'm not just talking about Islam. I'm talking about all religion here. You know, the question that he was saying there, in my interpretation, is that's what I don't understand. Well, if there is, then why do children get cancer? Why do innocent people die? Why do bad things happen to good people? That's what I don't understand. Then why, if there is a God or there is a higher power, why do these bad things happen? That's what I can't understand as an atheist. That's that's what... I know many atheists. I cannot speak to for all atheists. That's what I grapple with. And that's what a lot of atheist people that I know, that, that's what they grapple with. It's really, really hard to understand. So I'm glad he actually touched on that. I'm still not convinced. But that's the first time I've heard someone talk about that and really pull it apart. So I think that was a really powerful thing that he said because quite often people don't talk about that. Well, let's answer it, you know. So I thought that was really, really good from Jeffrey Lang to talk about that. And this is the first time that I've seen this man. I actually didn't know of him. So I'm quite interested to see more of what he says. Um, So I found that really interesting. And you could see me really thinking about that. This is, as I said, it's the first time that I've seen him. That's a lot of information for me to take in. Um, But they're probably the main points that I took from that. I'll probably need to go and process that now and watch a little bit more of his story. I'm quite interested to see his journey. Just doing a quick Google there, it said that he was a Christian. I think it said he was a Christian and then atheist and then he's gone to Islam. So that's a really interesting story. I'm quite interested in that. You know, like I, I'm I'm an atheist currently and I've never converted to anything. So I'm quite interested to see how we went from um, Christianity to uh, atheist to um, Islam and why, you know, particularly from Christianity to atheism. I wonder what happened there, you know, but he made some really, really good points there and um, he was very open. And I think he he's obviously got the courage to bring those points up, but a lot of people are wanting to know the answers to, like myself. You know, if, like I said, you know, that was a really, really frequently asked question by atheists. If you do say there is a God, then why why is there cancer in children? Why are innocent people hurt? You know, they're, they're questions that people like myself want to know. And the fact that he brought that up, that's good. He may not have the answer to that, but he has the courage to bring that up. So I thought that was a really well-designed um, video. I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm quite keen to see more of these videos. So yeah. Really enjoyed it. A great one to react to. Let me know your comments below. Very thought provoking and quite interesting. So thank you so much to Islam on Demand. The purpose, uh, sorry, um, no, that wasn't that one. It's gone to the next video there. I do apologize for that. Um, it has gone to my next video. I do apologize. Let me just get that back up. Um, let me just pause that because. Uh, Apologies, it skipped to the next video and now I'm just trying to reload it. The question is, 
and the internet is so slow here in Australia, even though we are a first world country, it is so terrible here. When Quran shocked Jeffrey Lang and the channel is I Only Fear Allah, it was really good. Really, really enjoyed it. As I said, um, initially I wasn't sure where it was going because I didn't know the history of Jeffrey Lang's, Lang. So I was like, where is this going? What is he talking about? And then I started to figure out, okay, I think he's either been an atheist or a Christian and he's converted and he's he's trying to bring it all together. And particularly when they sort of uh, went to the audience and I could see there's, you know, obviously Muslims in the audience and then um, not that you can tell from looking at someone whether they're a Christian or not, but obviously I could see the hijab and then I could see, you know, people not wearing it, which doesn't mean that they're not a Muslim. My Muslim friend doesn't wear one, but I started to think, okay, he could be a Christian or he, you know, he's American, maybe he's not Muslim, maybe he is. And I started to think, ah, oh, I wonder whether he's converted. So I found that really interesting. Let, let us know your thoughts below. Thank you for joining us here at GEMS. My name is Melissa Mitchell from here in Australia, Abundant Life Studio. Until next time, you're watching GEMS. Thank you for stay, uh, stopping by and we'll see you next time.